Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Life in the Spirit. My name is David Furrow. This is Joe Roroff, and we have Craig Miller over here. Hello. It's been a couple weeks actually since we've been up here, okay. so uh, some things have happened. But <laughs> why do you have to say it like that? It's, you're so weird. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not trying to be weird, but it's okay. yeah, it's just been a while. So yeah. it's nice know. to see everybody again. Yeah. Good to be here with you guys. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. It is. We've got some news going on. We got some things that are happening yeah, in the are. body of Christ and in the country. And yeah. yeah. You know, guys, I think there's a lot of letdown with what happened in the nation as a whole as far as the elections. Um, I haven't been let down. I think God has a plan. Mm-hmm. I think God has a way, and we still continue to move in it. Yep. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Totally. So I, I still say, even with all the stuff that's happening, I mean, there's stuff that happened in the elections that, you know, you can say there was cheating, you can say it was stolen, you can say all that, but... Um, my hope is still in Jesus. Yeah. And that's that's kind of the bottom line and where it lays. And that's the truth that I'm going to continue to walk in, that these are still the best of times. Yeah. And we were born for such a time as this. Yeah. And so I know with even all the prophetic words and things that were spoken um, over the elections, you know, the whole red wave and, and those things, um, you know, the only one that I think had a red wave was the Lord. And that was at the sea when he parted it, at the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah. and I like what you did there. Yeah. So, you know, I, guys, I just want to go back a little bit, and I want to give some food for thought. Um, and these are my thoughts. I want you to know that these are my thoughts. I'm just going to throw some things out there to everybody, but these are my thoughts. So I don't want you to take them as prophetic. I'm going to have I have a couple of scriptures that I'll share, but. It's something to chew on and something to think about. Mm -hmm. So as I was reading, and this is as I was reading, you know, after everything has taken place, and I was, and I was actually, I was thinking about the state of the church, and I was thinking about the state of the nation and the world as a whole. And so I was going through, and I can't remember what exactly I was listening to. I don't know if it was Dutch or somebody um, on one of the shows or something. But anyway... It was talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord, God, being the rock, being our salvation. And so I, I went back. I went back into the Old Testament. And you guys know, out there maybe you don't know, but I'm, I'm a carpenter by trade. Um, I came kind of, I'm pretty laid back today. Um, and I have on my work stuff that I go to the job site on and stuff. So being a carpenter by trade, <clears throat> there's certain things um, that we have to do uh, as we're reading blueprints and plans that are drawn up uh, to build things or to build things upon. And so I was looking at the rock, and I was going through even the Old Testament. Uh, it talks about in Second Samuel, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, and, and he is the rock in whom I will trust. Um, the Lord is our rock, and he's exalted on high. He's the rock of my salvation. So there's all these things in, in the Old Testament that's talking about the Lord our God being our rock and our firm foundation, right? And so I was thinking about that, and I got into the New Testament, and I started also looking up the rock and the cornerstone, and I got to thinking. Now, again, these are my thoughts, and you guys, I want you to jump in at any time. I got to thinking about the Lord being the rock my firm foundation in the Old Testament. Then in the New Testament, you know, something happened. Jesus came. So I saw, this, this is just me, but I saw out of the rock was cut this cornerstone out of the rock of Jesus. So now this cornerstone we know has to be perfect. It's tied or, or tried, tested, and it's true, Right? So everything off the cornerstone must be built off of that. If you don't build off the cornerstone, if it's not true, if it's not tried, if it's not tested, if it's not plumb, you aren't going to build anything that's going to stand for very long, right? So we have this foundation, which is our Lord, our God. We have the foundation. Now we have this cornerstone that has been added onto the foundation, and everything gets built off of that. So 
I was thinking about this. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about building and what we do is, you know, a lot of times we can build and we can construct buildings. And we, and we always do. We go off the cornerstone. Everything has to be squared up. Everything has to be plumb. Or the building is not going to be built very well, right? But here's what happens. And this is what happens in the church. This is what happens in the nation. This is what happens in, in the world. So we've been building on this foundation. Now, the foundation, we know that that's solid. That's, that is not going to change. We know that the cornerstone is true. It's been tried. You know, Jesus is perfect in every way. So we know that that's not going to change either. But we begin to build off the very foundation and off the cornerstone, and that's where the problem begins. Is because we think that we can, in our own abilities, add to what God has done. And we can do that, but the problem is, we get in our own way, and what happens if I put in an inferior window inside of a house that's been framed up? It looks good at first, right? But over time, the window either is going to rot out, fall out, or break, right? So we know those things are happening. Joe, you're in real estate. You've seen this a number of times where we have to go in and we have to reconstruct and we have to redo homes, right? Right? And, and why is that? Sometimes, I've been on a couple of your projects. So, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, I mean, but sometimes it's the foundation or that that's been laid upon, on the, upon the foundation that's faulty. Yeah. And so if it hasn't been done correctly, things have to be replaced and has to be restructured. Now, the foundation is true, the cornerstone is true, but everything that we've laid upon that is not. So if it's not those things have to be replaced and redone. Or if we've done it, we think, well, this is, this is a good enough quality that we're going to do this for this, and it lasts for maybe 50 years. And then it begins to crumble and fall apart, even though the foundation, the cornerstone, is still true. So I was thinking about the construction and how we construct today, and, you know, we use a lot of inferior um, metals, woods, and things like that as we're building. But you go back... Even before the United States, and you look at the buildings that were built, the castles and things like that, or, yeah. and the walls that were built out of stone, those things are still standing today because they, they knew they had something, they believed in something, they, they had something that they knew would last forever. But our mentality has kind of changed, not only um, in, in our world and the way that we look at, at things in, in construction, but I think, and again, this is food for thought. I'm just throwing this out here. But I think a lot of times our promises, our prayers, are a lot of times for the moment, but they aren't for the future. You know, so we're living in the now. Well, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We live in the now. But we have to get to that place where we're not only looking back at the mistakes that were made, not only looking today, but we're looking at the future and what the future holds because we want something that's going to last. So I was thinking about that. I'm trying to put this all together into, into one thing, and I can't do it. So I picture God in the very beginning of time. And I picture God, and he's holding this rock and he's looking at it, and he goes, well, what should I do with this? And then he spoke to it. And light was. I mean, the world began at the very foundation, at, uh, at the very foundation of God in his hands. The world began. And I thought, okay, so we're a people underneath this foundation, underneath this rock. I mean, we're the dust of the earth, and that we're going to return to. We're going to return to the dust. And I, guys, I know that I'm rambling here, but I'm, I'm looking at God. I'm thinking that he took us out of the very dust of the earth, and he created us. And we've even forgotten that. We just think, you know, this is, you look at the world, and the world is, is, is based on everybody is a God. Everything is a God. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we look at our jobs. We look at the monetary system. We, we, we look at, you know, everything that's being set up. And it is all an idol. 
you know, for us. And so we're, we continue to build upon the structure that is solid. We continue to build on the cornerstone that is true. And we continue to put faulty stuff on top of it. And then we wonder why, what happened? If we can't get to the place where God has called us, even in this body, and I'm not saying this body's bad. I don't want anybody to mis mistake what I'm saying here because we've had some wonderful times. If you watched the last episode, I don't know if it was on, was it on YouTube? I'm not sure, David. Yeah, it was. So we were really impacted by the Holy Spirit. So I think that the Holy Spirit really wants to impact his people, and he wants to build upon what he's doing. But that, there's a price then that has to be paid because if we're just building this thing for today and we're not building it for the future, and we've talked about that many times, if we're not building that thing for the future, if we're not building this for the future, for the future generations, then what is it all for? Is it, is it for us to live in this time to feel good about where we're at? I mean, I know I'm a Christian. I, the Lord is my Savior. I know that I'm going to be okay no matter what happens in the world. Even if my life is taken from me, I know the place where I'm going. But if we just continue to build this house, we continue to line it with windows that are just of, of this world and of this age that, you know, are going to rot out where we, we use a, a, a substrate that, that isn't good, but it'll do. I mean, I think that we have to relook at things and, and rethink the things, the very things that we're doing and what, what this is all about. Yeah. Now, I, I, think that we're, I think that we're pretty safe here. This is a safe place. We talked about this last time. This is a resting place for the Lord God Almighty to have his way and have his place in us. But it just can't be here. It just can't be in this building. It has to follow us in everything that we do and everything that we are. Yeah. Now, we know, we know, guys, that, you know, when after Sunday mornings or Wednesday evenings or a, a, a Friday night encounter and we're feeling so good, and it isn't a day later and we're back out in the world and all this stuff begins to pile up on us. It begins to come onto the foundation and it begins to erode the very thing that we've built upon. So automatically our house that we have built begins to crumble. And that's where we have to make sure that we build, that we do the things that God has called us to do and we don't sway away from that. Because everything but God is inferior. Everything. And so we have to make sure that you know, when the Lord says turn left, we have to turn left. We have to be in, in that stage in our, in our walk with the Lord that he's speaking to us on a continual basis and he's saying to us, I want you to go here. I want you to witness to that person. I want you to share with that person. I want you to lay your hands on that person. That person shall recover. When those words come to us, we have to act on the word that is being spoken because that's the only way his house is going to be built and it's not going to deteriorate, and it's not going to fall. Because it's all him. It's nothing that we've done. It's nothing that we're trying to build upon. It's, it's none of our products that we use here on earth to build with. Because we know everything that we build with is, is going to eventually disintegrate, and it's going to go away. And so again, it brings me back to Joe, what you said. I'm willing to give up everything for you, Lord. We talk about this all the time. Then the question is, are we really? Yeah. Are we really ready to give everything up that we have gained? Am I ready to give up my 401k even though right now it's almost gone anyway? <laughs> right? So. <laughs> what are you going to do? But, it, but it's a thing, Joe. So. I want to put this in perspective just a little bit, and then I'm, I'm going to be quiet, and I'll let you guys talk. I want to put this in perspective just a little bit, 401Ks. Let's talk about that. So if you have money in your 401K, and if you lost 50 grand or 100 grand in your 401K, you're still here. Yep. You're still alive, you're still alive and you've lost that kind of money. It's like, come on. Mm-hmm. 
if, if, if I was, Joe, if you were to just have, a, you went to the bank and you pulled out uh, 50 grand and you're walking down the street and you lost it somewhere and you had no idea where it went, it would be devastating to you probably, right? Yeah. It'd be hard, right? But because we don't see it, because it's, it's out there somewhere in a cloud, and we, even though we've, we've lost it, it's gone. We're still here. And I'm, I'm not devastated by it because I know that God is going to take care of us. I know that God is going to take care of the body of Christ. I know that God is going to take care of you. But we have to, our mindset has to be switched. And it's not on the things that we've made. It's not on the things that, that we've tried to build. It's, it's not about uh, on the promises of a man or men or a government. It's not about that. It is about the government of God, and it is about him who we build everything off of. Because everything that God has done, everything that he showed us, has been tried, has been tested, and it's true. Yeah, I think you're 100% correct. I mean, Jesus is the cornerstone, but he is also the master builder. And so, you know, we keep trying as the church, I'm just going to say the big see church you know we keep trying to do things under our own power we, we do. keep putting the inferior product on the cornerstone it can't stand all we need to do is say jesus you're the master builder build this whatever ideas i had in mind whatever you know lofty goals i had it all has to just fade away because only what he cares about and what he wants is what matters all else fades away, you know, we either are going to be, you know, on this earth, people are either going to think we wasted our time yes, or the Lord's going to say we wasted our time. Which one do you want it <laughs> yeah. to be? I mean, I want to have people say I wasted my life, not the Lord, because yeah. <laughs> I do not want to get in front of the Lord and him be like, what were you doing? But, yeah. you know, going back to, I think this whole thing is, We've got to get back to the basics. Yes. If you're a sports team, when you're struggling, what does every coach say? <laughs> Next practice, we're going back to the basics, and we're just working on the fundamentals. That's what the early church did. They just cared about the fundamentals. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't care about yeah. whatever program was going to be happening. They were not worried about the government or some other person that was going to be the one providing for them. It was... The Lord's going to provide whatever we may need. He's the one that's, that's going right. to provide it for us. And I think, you know, going, not trying to be political here or anything, but I think the church, I don't care what party you're, that you prefer or not, but we keep putting our hopes, hopes and dreams in a party that the government is somehow going to f- figure it out. And it goes back to that scripture in Second Chronicles, if my people would humble themselves and pray. Yeah. It's not when elections come that we're going to get it all changed or whatever. No, it's when my people humble themselves and pray and repent. Then that's when the, I will heal their land. Yes, do we need a partner with the Lord and bring about? But it has to be married with the two. It cannot be one or the other because if we just try to put out our vote or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is our hope has to be in the Lord, and the only way that our land is going to be healed is if our hope is in him and we repent and turn from our wicked ways. not we're going to get out the vote and we're going to change everything. It's, no, only he can do it. So our only hope is in the Lord. we got to stop. And I think the Lord keeps, we keep not learning the lesson, obviously, <laughs> because, agree. you know, we had COVID. We had the 2020 elections. Everybody... You know, and not saying Donald Trump is a bad person or that he wasn't great or I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying Democrats, he's the devil. Republicans, Christians, everybody's like, oh, he's the best thing since sliced bread. No, our savior is not Donald Trump. That's right. Our savior is not the Democratic or Republican Party. I don't care who Biden is not our savior. It is the Lord and the Lord alone. And we keep failing the lessons that the Lord is trying to teach us. And it's honestly scary because it's like, 
what is ha going to happen next, yeah. that he's going to get our attention, that we put our trust in him. But we get back to the basics and the foundations of what the early church had, which brought about this, the greatest revival we've ever seen. And, yeah. you know, we keep talking about revival, but one thing we forget about is what happened with revival. A lot of revival followed up with a lot of persecution. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we keep saying we want these things. And it's been coming to my mind because I've been reading these revival books about, you know, different revivals and stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, I keep asking for this stuff. But <laughs> it doesn't get any easier once it happens. It, it actually gets worse. Mm -hmm. And so our trust and our, like I said, our trust and our hope has to be in the Lord. Otherwise, to be. we when these things happen, we're just going to fall away because we can't handle what happens next. Yeah, yeah because, uh, David, I think what happens is, now, had what the elections in 2022, had they been different and there was that red wave, people would have sat back on the laurels again and it's all good. Mm -hmm. Look, I am here now and I will say this prophetically, it is going to get worse before it gets better. Yep. Yeah. So because there is an awakening that is happening and coming and we have to be on the right side. When I say on the right side, I'm not talking politically. Yeah. I'm not saying that. But we have to be on the right side of the Lord because, you know, we don't want to be that lukewarm Christian. What happens to the lukewarm Christian? He gets spit out, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to be that. We got to be, I mean, this is the time that we live in that we have to move when God tells us to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just say, like, Yes, I'm a citizen of the United States, but first and foremost, my calling is to be a citizen of heaven. Amen. Amen. And that is what I'm going for. I'm going for souls in La Crosse County and throughout the world. And I'm not interested in taking a back seat on that or being quiet about who Jesus is. And a few things that the Lord's just been showing me is surrender to his spirit and fellowship with his Holy Spirit. Because uh, I think it's Romans 8 talks about, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And when I think about fellowship with the Holy Spirit, that is just a constant, ongoing, like, I love you, Holy Spirit. Take Amen. over and let me, let me uh, do whatever you ask me to do. And get me out of it. Because as we're talking about foundations, um, a lot of people don't understand how to surrender to the Holy Spirit and say, take over. That's, take over oh a man, church service. Take over my life. Take over my job. Take over my family. Mm -hmm. Take over every little part of me. I surrender to you. And a lot of times when we build these faulty foundations, it's because we put a lot of what we want That's right. yeah. into the foundation. And I've just been like, I was talking to a friend from Virginia the other day and he, I was like, dude, I just want to see like revival. Like I want to see the Holy Spirit come in a church meeting, just knock everybody out. And we're all just filled completely with the Holy Spirit, like on Pentecost. And he goes, oh, you know how you do that? And I was like, what? There's a secret? How do I do it? Yeah, tell, give me the secret. What do I say? What do I do? And he was just like, nothing. You don't do anything. Like, you just let him do what he wants to do. Yeah. And I was That's like, good. Oh, dude, that's so, that's like speaking to me because I've been learning about just surrender. Just relax. Mm -hmm. He's got that. He's got he, Jesus said, I will build my church. That's right. Yeah. And so many times we think, man, I know how to build this church. I've got a master's of divinity. I went to school for this. I know how to turn a church from 100 to 1,000. I know how to save souls by preaching really good. But beloved, when we figure out that we can do nothing on our own and we allow the power of God to move yeah. in our congregation, then you're going to go from a few souls saved to thousands of souls saved. Mm -hmm. Like you look at Peter stands up, th 
the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, 3,000 saved on Pentecost. Acts 17, he preaches this amazing sermon in Athens on Mars Hill. How many people were saved? A few. Paul was like a genius in the brain. And he pre preached this perfect sermon. Like they go in seminaries. To, they say, preach like this because this is the perfect sermon. And then what? A Acts at 18, he goes to Corinth. So I imagine Paul's going, what did I do wrong that only a few people were saved and Peter stood up and thousands were saved? And then in 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians 2, 4, he says, I decided to know nothing. I didn't come That's with right. you with plausible languages, but I came to you with the power of God. And boy, <laughs> saw revival mm -hmm. in Corinthians, Corinth, Corinth. That's what we need. Yeah. We don't need more masters of divinity. We don't That's need right. more schooling. We just mm -hmm. need to surrender to the Holy Spirit and let him do what he wants to do. And if we see that, we'll see thousands saved. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to see a few. Like, uh, imagine if a few people on a Sunday morning came to the Lord. We'd, we'd be jumping out of our we'd socks. We'd explode. We'd be like, throw a party. <laughs> we got, <laughs> right. haul out the baptismal. We got three people. We got a few people saved in a church service. Hallelujah. The spirit is moving, you know? And Paul, he looks at a few and he goes, what I do wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, then he goes to Corinth and he's like, I'm just going to let the power of God move on these people. Amen. Come on. When Jesus sent out the 12, when he sent out the 72, he said, I've given you power and authority to cast out demons and heal the That's sick right. and proclaim the gospel. Like if they would have just went and proclaimed the gospel, how many people would have listened to him? But you lay your hands on a broken foot and it completely recovers. People are going to listen to you. That's right. Yep. So Joe, what you're saying is, there's hope for a simple carpenter like me Amen. Yeah. to allow yeah. God to move through the simple man mm. yeah. so that his work can be done. Amen. Amen. The disciples were baby Christians. They were. Like they were between the ages of 12 and 17 years old. They had only been with Jesus for a year and Jesus sent them out to do miracles. Change why, the world. Why can't we? Like what are we, what are we waiting for? But see, that's that's the that's the question: is why can't we? We can. Mm -hmm. Is it we? It, it, it's a mindset that has to be changed, mm -hmm. where I'm abandoning all to give to the one thing. Yep. And so if if we can't if we can't do that, it's like you know our house. We know it's it's built on a a sure foundation, that cornerstone is there. But we continue to build with those false materials and we have to stop. Yep. We build with our own ideas. Our, our own, own ideas, thoughts, our, our own, own thoughts. Yeah. Ugh. And 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 Forgive the perfect us, programs. Lord. Yep. Yeah. And and the right music. And uh we just we gotta just, get out of our way. <laughs> So I was going to say that we just have to get out of our own way and allow God to be God. So, food for thought. What do you think, guys? Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I'm just, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, we have, I'm going to make a sports reference, but, and some young people might not get this. They might be too young. But think about it. We have Michael Jordan or LeBron James, whoever you think's the greatest. We have them on our team, but we keep passing it to everybody else on the team except for the greatest of all time. Yeah. We never let them touch the ball because we're afraid if they touch the ball, they might mess things up. Oh, that's good. Ouch. And so I'm good because I am the greatest of all because he that is in me yes. makes me the greatest of all. Yeah, so we just got to get out of our own way. Let the Lord do his thing. Yeah. Let him. Basically, what we need, another sports terms, we need to put everybody at all four corners, give the Lord the ball, and let him go. Watch him. Yes. If we, if we do that, him. watch what happens. Oh, yeah. If he, yeah. We, won't, we won't know what to do. 
Just wait till this Sunday. Let's just do it. Let's yeah. Just go for it. <laughs> so, well, on that note, guys. <laughs> I, I, I think that, you know, we've given you a lot to chew on. And, you know, these are things that I, I was just, I, I've been contemplating. I've been thinking. I've been, you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure this whole thing out. And, you know, that's okay that we try to figure this stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm... You know, I'm I'm even trying to figure out where I'm at in this whole thing. Yeah. Because I realize in my life I have not surrendered everything to him because, you know, there, I, I have some safeguards. Mm -hmm. But I, got, I have to be able to surrender all, to receive all that he has for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to lay it all down at the foot of the cross. Eek. Yep. And we gotta be okay with whatever happens. And from we gotta there. be okay. Yeah. Woo. That's good. Joe. Cool. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well guys, oh. we appreciate you being with us for another episode of Life in the Spirit. We love you guys and God bless. God bless, bless you. <laughs>